Once again, with our array of numbers, let's say we want to calculate the sum of all these numbers in this array. This would be similar to calculating the total cost of all the items in a shopping cart. So each numbers here could represent the price of an item in a shopping cart. Of course, we wouldn't have a negative number there, but you got the point. So here's a very simple algorithm for calculating the sum of all the numbers in this array. We start by declaring a variable called sum and we initialize it to zero. Next, we loop over this array, get each element or each number and add it to sum. Something like this, for let n of numbers. Now we wanna add n to sum. So we can write an expression like this, sum equals sum plus n, or a better way is to use the addition assignment operator. So we can exclude the second sum. So this is exactly like the statement we had before. And finally, we display sum on the console. So we get five. Now there is a cleaner and more elegant way to write the same code using the reduce method in arrays. So all these arrays have this reduce method and with this method, we can reduce all these elements in an array into a single value. That single value can be a number, it can be a string, it can be an object, it can be anything. In this example, we want to reduce all these elements into a single number. That is the sum of all the numbers in this array. So let's see how we can use the reduce method. This method takes a callback function with two parameters, accumulator, and current value. So here I'm using an arrow function like this. This accumulator parameter here is exactly like this sum we have here. It's something that we initialize and then this callback function is executed multiple times. Each time this current value will be set to one element in this array. Okay, so in each call we want to get this current value and add it to accumulator. So we simply return the sum of accumulator plus current value. Now internally, this reduce method will get this result and store it in the accumulator. You will see that in a second. Now one last thing we need to do here is to initialize this accumulator to zero. So as the second argument to the reduce method, we pass zero. Note that this reduce method has two arguments. The first argument is a callback function and the second argument is the initial value for the accumulator. Finally, we get the result as a single value, in this case, sum. Now we don't need this code anymore. And finally, let's bring this console.log here. Save the changes. We can see we get the same result, five, but let's see what exactly is happening here. So initially we said accumulator to zero. So I'm gonna set A equals zero. In the first round, current value will be set to the first number. So C equals one. Now we add this together. So we get one and A will be set to one after this callback function is executed. So as a result, A will be one. Now in the second round, a is one, current value will be set to the second number in this array, so minus one. Now once again, we add them together, so a will be zero after the second call. Now the third call, so a is zero, the current value is going to be set to the third element in this array, so two, and as a result, a will be two, and finally in the last call, we start with a set to two and current value will be three. Okay, so the result will be five and that's why we saw five on the console. So essentially with this reduce method, we start with an accumulator, then we loop through this array and convert all these elements into a single value, which is in this case, accumulator or the sum of all the numbers in this array. Now we can make this code even shorter. We can exclude the initialization of the accumulator and with this accumulator will be set to the first element. So let me show you what will happen. 
a will initially be set to 1 and current value will be set to minus 1. That is exactly like our second call here, right? So as a result, a will be set to 0. Now, in our second round, a will be 0 and current value will be 2 because in the previous call, current value was here. So now we are here. So current value will be 2. And as a result, a will be 2. And finally, in the last call, a will be 2. And current value will be 3, the last element in this array. And once again, we get 5. So if we supply an initial value, we'll have one more call. If we don't, the first element in this array will be used as the initial value. So this is how the reduce method works. And finally, to make this code a little bit shorter, we can get rid of this return keyword because we have a single line and we are simply returning a value. So remove the return, the semicolon, and the curly braces, put everything on a single line like this. So with this single line of code, we reduce the numbers array, and this is how our reduction algorithm works. We simply get the current value and add it to our accumulator. This is far cleaner and more elegant than declaring a sum and then looping over this array, like let n of numbers and then add n to the sum. That's a very old way of writing code. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.